first stage of the brewing process is to fill our two hot liquor tanks with seven Trent mains water. This is then heated up to a temperature between 73 to 74 degrees Celsius. The second stage of the process is to weigh out the recipe and load the grist case with our different types of malt, depending on which beer we're brewing. This is our mash tun. This is where we blend our hot liquor with the malt from our grist case. This will mix to a nice porridge-like state and we will leave the mixture to stand for an hour. What we are hoping to achieve is a mash temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. This is in order to extract as much soluble sugars from the malt as possible. This will ultimately be converted into alcohol when we come to the fermentation stage. After an hour, we will run off the liquid known as wort, spelt W-O-R-T, into our copper. To extract the soluble sugars contained in the mash tun, we use a process called sparging, which rinses out the malt to collect the maximum amount of soluble sugars. Once we have filled up the copper, in America known as a kettle, we boil the solution. Once the kettle reaches 100 degrees Celsius, we add our bittering hops. After an hour, we add our second hops. And after another further half an hour, we add our final hops, which are the aroma hops. At this stage, we turn off the burner, as we want to retain as much of the aroma hop characteristics within the wort as possible. The next stage is to transfer the wort into our fermenting vessel. The wort is passed through a heat exchanger to bring down its temperature. If it is too hot, the yeast will die. The waste hot water is collected in our hot liquor tanks for the next brew, or used for cleaning. Once we have started running the wort into our fermenting vessel, we add our yeast. When all the wort and yeast is in the vessel, we allow the fermentation to occur which can take between three and four days. We then stop the fermentation by chilling the beer. Once we have chilled the beer for 24 hours, we transfer it into the racking tank, which is this Starbug-like vessel, or Japanese capsule hotel room as some call it. Once all the beer is transferred into our racking tank, we add initial finings, which help the yeast particles drop out of suspension in the beer. After this stage, we rack off our beer into casks and then add our second set of findings, which act to further reduce the yeast count that is contained in the beer when it is prepared in the pub cellar. The beer then goes into our cold storage area, where it will be conditioned for around one week at 11 degrees Celsius, before going into our pubs. The beer is then left to settle and further conditioned in the cellar before it is ready to be drunk and the fruits of the process can be enjoyed. The ingredients. In brewing there are four essential ingredients, water, malt, hops and yeast. At Castle Rock we believe in quality, we think it's the only way, so in order to get a good beer you have to use good ingredients. At Castle Rock, product quality is paramount. We don't wish to use inferior ingredients. We pay extra for quality ingredients, which we know leads to stunning results. Malt. Since the brewery doesn't have facilities to grind the malt itself, it arrives at Castle Rock free ground from Thomas Fawcett in Castleford, West Yorkshire. Our first malt is lager malt, it is very light in colour, giving a light straw colour characteristic to the beer. It is used in our award-winning Harvest Pale. Harvest Pale won gold in the Champion Beer of Britain Bitter Category Award in 2007, which is a very prestigious award, of which we are extremely proud. Maris Otter Malt is another pale malt, which gives the beer a subtle orange tinge and is the basis for all other Castle Rock beers. 
Occasionally, we use amber malt, which is mainly used in our wildlife seasonal beers. This gives a nice orange-brown tinge to the beer. Crystal malt, which is primarily used in hemlock, gives a brown rustic colour. Black malt, as you can see, is a very dark malt and used in stouts and dark beers to give a rich full colour and taste. This is chocolate malt, which is used in porters and dark beer. Hops Castle Rock always try to support our English hop growers wherever we can. Local sourcing and sustainability are both issues that are important to us. There are two main reasons for adding hops, providing bitterness and aroma. Hops also have an active antiseptic ingredient that acts as a natural preservative. One of the English bittering hops we use is known as Fuggles. And an English aroma hop is known as Goldings. With hops, you can have a single derivative beer using one style of hops, or they can be blended to a specific recipe. Apart from using English hops, we also use hops from Eastern Europe, the States and occasionally New Zealand. Yeast The yeast is arguably the most important of the four ingredients, despite the fact that it doesn't end up in the final product. It is a living organism that is kept alive and used from brew to brew. It needs to be well nourished and kept clean. If the yeast is unwell or infected, then any problems this creates can be far-reaching and catastrophic. The yeast strain we use at Castle Rock comes from the Hardys and Hansons Brewery that has history in Nottingham back to 1832. Water The last ingredient is water, which in brewing terms is known as liquor. We obtain our liquor from Seven Trent Mains water, which is then treated with a special blend of brewing salts that make it unique and the perfect base ingredient from which to brew Castle Rock's award-winning beers. Remember that to brew a quality beer like ours here at Castle Rock, you need quality ingredients, but you also need consistency of process, dedication, and a passion for brewing and maybe drinking the best possible beers. Support your local brewery and enjoy the best that British beer has to offer.